At the Quillen College of Medicine and ETSU Health, we are passionate about making an impact on the health of our community, particularly on the health of our babies. A recent summer research study found that the use of Suboxone during pregnancy to treat opioid use disorder might be having an undesired effect on our community, particularly on our babies. I'm Dr. Marty Olson, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology at East Tennessee State University, and I'm excited to talk about Summer Shore's research project which was recently published in the Southern Medical Journal. The focus of my research is uh, neonatal abstinence syndrome and long-term effects of opioid use disorder on the newborns of women who are treated with Suboxone and Subutex while they're pregnant. And Summer's work is a part of that project. I personally think that we can do better. I think that uh, we can lower the neonatal absence syndrome rate, and I think that we can preserve the brains of the babies whose mothers are on these medications. And Summer's project had an interesting start. One day I was just looking through Tennessee Department of Health w website, and I saw a curve, and this curve was number of buprenorphine prescriptions in Tennessee over the years. Buprenorphine, of course, is the ingredient in the medication Suboxone and Subutex that are used for opioid use disorder. And I said, I have seen that curve. So then I pulled up the curve on neonatal abstinence syndrome rate, and they were almost exactly the same. So that gave me the idea for a research project. And the research project was, let's see if Tennessee's experience is the same as the rest of Southern Appalachia. Well, we had a summer research program. We had a great medical student, and I said, Summer, here's this idea, run with it. And run she did, she did a great job. And specifically for this project, we're interested in seeing a reduction in the neonatal abstinence syndrome rate here in our region. So as part of this project, I had the opportunity to first identify the 250 counties that make up Southern Appalachia. Then I identified the neonatal abstinence syndrome rate, as well as the buprenorphine prescribing rate in those regions. We then compiled each subregion to create a data value for the overall Southern Appalachian region. Then we looked at trends and associations between these values and were able to see that there was a rising neonatal abstinence syndrome, not just in Tennessee, but also in the Southern Appalachian region. And this rising rate was um, in the same trend upwards as the buprenorphine prescription trend. Summer's research is very important. It's the first to show a correlation between the number of buprenorphine prescriptions for a region and the rise in neonatal absence syndrome rates. There's an important next step. Some governmental agency should take a look at the buprenorphine prescription dosages for pregnant women and compare that to the neonatal absence syndrome rates for their children. This can be very important in improving the health care for the children of our region.